Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. On October 6th, Prime Minister Netanyahu addressed the students at Bar Ilan University. Uh, specifically, he was speaking to the uh, um, Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies on their 20th anniversary. And he, it's a lengthy speech, I won't go to all of it, but there's a section of it I want to read to you because of its importance. We don't often hear Israel's leaders speak about this. I think they should speak about this more, frankly. But this is what he said during part of this speech. He said the political process with the Palestinians involves resolving complicated problems. It, it will be deemed successful only if it is built on the foundation of truth. The truth of the present and historic truth. Unfortunately, the truth that is under constant attack from our enemies and opponents. They try to undermine the ancient connection of our people with the land of Israel and obfuscate the basic facts of the conflict between us and the Palestinians in uh, the 20th century. I would just say parenthetically, <clears throat> I think Israel's strongest argument for their existence, the right to exist in the land where they exist, is based upon God's eternal covenants made with the Jewish people. I wish they'd emphasize that more. Going on. For example, several days ago, I heard Iran's representative half-heartedly comment on the Nazi crimes. It's difficult for them to say Holocaust. But immediately he added vigorously that one should not allow the Zionists to take advantage of the Nazi crimes, that is, the Holocaust, in order to harm the Palestinians. Iran's representatives repeat time and time again the familiar trope that the Holocaust occurred without any connection to the Palestinian question, and only later the Zionist leader came along and made use of the Holocaust to repress the Palestinians. Well, what are the facts? The undisputed leader of the Palestinian National Movement in the first half of the 20th century was Mufti Haj Amin al-Husseini. He was the ranking Islamic cleric in Israel. Uh, Jerusalem, living in Jerusalem. The Mufti was the living spirit behind those same attacks I described from 1921 in Jaffa through the Second World War. All this is known, but here are some facts about the Mufti's activities that are less well known. On November 28, 1941, the Mufti flew to Berlin and met with Hitler and basically stayed in Germany throughout the war. He expressed to Hitler his readiness to cooperate with Germany in any way and did so both by recruiting Muslim fighters to join the ranks of the SS in the Balkans and by broadcasting propaganda for the Nazis. Here's a typical, typical example of propaganda broadcast by the Mufti in 1942, and I quote, If England is defeated and its allies overwhelmed, it, it will provide a final solution to the Jewish question, which in our mind is the greatest of dangers. In a quote, between 1942 and 1944, he worked from his base in Berlin and tried to prevent Jews from being saved in Hungary, Germany, Bulgaria, Croatia, countries which, despite being enslaved to Hitler, allowed Jews to escape to the land of Israel and other places. The Mufti protested to the Nazis that they hadn't provided enough resources to prevent the escape of the refugee Jews from the Balkans. In his testimony on the Nuremberg trials, at the Nuremberg trials, on August 6, 1947, the German commander Wilhelm Melchers said, quote, The Mufti made his protests known everywhere in the Bureau of the Foreign Ministry and the State Minister and, and other headquarters of the, of the SS. On May 13, 1943, for example, the Mufti submitted a letter to the Nazi Foreign Minister Rippentrop in which he objected to the understandings Germany made with which allowed for the deportation of 4,000 Jewish children from Bulgaria. He asked to see, quote, everyone, and I quote, everyone, everyone wiped out. Eichmann's deputy, Dieter Wisleisny, provided the following chilling testimony at Nuremberg. The Mufti played a role in the decision to destroy the uh, Jews of Europe. The importance of his role cannot be ignored. The Mufti repeatedly proposed to the authorities with whom he was in contact, first and foremost Hitler, Rippentrop, or Rippentrop and Heimler, uh, to destroy the European Jews. 
He saw that an appropriate solution to the Palestinian question. With Slicey even provided hearsay evidence that the Mufti was directly involved in the final solution. Quote, the Mufti was one of the initiators of the methodical destruction of the Jews in Europe and was a partner and a consultant to Eichmann and Hitler, Hitler on how to execute the plan. He was one of Eichmann's best friends and constantly pushed him to speed up the destruction. With my own hear, ears, he said, quote, I heard him say that he visited the gas chambers of Auschwitz anonymously in the company of Eichmann. Ladies and gentlemen, Netanyahu continues, as opposed to the things being said by Iran's representatives and others, the Zionist leaders did not use the Holocaust to destroy the Palestinian national movement. On the contrary, the most senior Palestinian leader at the time, the Mufti, Haj Amin al-Husseini, preached and acted to implement the Holocaust in order to destroy the Zionist movement. It almost worked. European Jews uh, European Jewry was indeed wiped out, in part because of the Mus Mufti's efforts. But Zionism was not wiped out, and the state of Israel was established. Hallelujah. I would say this. I would just like to add to this. At the close of the war, uh, as the Russians were about to take over Berlin, the Mufti escaped from Berlin, and he went to Egypt. He was given asylum there, a place to stay. And there a willing student come under, came under his tutelage who picked up on his total philosophy and, philosophy and sought to implement it. That was Yasser Arafat. Uh, <clears throat> times have not changed with regard to the Palestinians. I would say also to you that there, there are many scholars, uh, uh, biblical scholars, who are convinced that those who will come against Israelis uh, Jews and Christians in the latter days, before the Messiah comes, will be those who are committed to the Nazi uh, final solution for Jews. Only this time it will include Christians. So be forewarned and be prepared. Till next week, God ki yavo shilo, or until Messiah comes, give a Yahweh. God bless you.